A short time ago I posted a number of videos on the repair of an ADM 3A dumb terminal and if you watch those videos you will most likely recognize this board it is of course the main board out of that unit uh, I've been going through and testing this uh, since I posted the last video I found a few more um, faults on it that I've corrected uh, I didn't put those on camera they were fairly um, boring and tedious to track down just uh, intermittent uh, not sending characters or uh, would send garbage now and again and uh, again they were just down to some poor connections on the board it is a very large board and boards of this size uh, are quite susceptible to uh, damage uh, when they're moved around and also in this particular design it's not held in the machine in a particularly uh, good fashion it's, it's, it's held in there quite firmly but it's, it's not supported evenly all the way across so it does tend to flex quite a bit um, and also it wasn't screwed in of course which doesn't help um, but uh, it's now fully functional it's uh, working fine I may post some more videos on its use and connecting it to things like uh, Altair 8800s but uh, I've been looking for a terminal for quite a, a long time and uh, I do tend to normally use uh, terminal emulators on PCs but they're not as much fun uh, a bit tedious to have to keep uh, firing up the PC to use and uh, I wanted uh, an older uh, style terminal to use uh, but looking around they are very expensive and hard to find and uh, once I'd finished repairing this and I'd been playing with it um, I really like this terminal it's quite a, a nice terminal to use I did have a search around and you can still buy these uh, but they're expensive and uh, also I kind of enjoy a challenge so what I've decided to do is to reproduce this board and um, the general plan is to make a board that's as similar to this as I can uh, obviously there'll be a few issues in doing that and uh, what I'd really like is any feedback uh, from yourselves as to uh, ideas um, especially around uh, keys to use uh, for the keyboard we can buy discrete keys off eBay or if there's a ready-made keyboard that uh, may work in this um, but any ideas along those lines then let me know um, but I thought what I'd do here is uh, just show the process as I go through this project and I'll post the occasional video to uh, let you see the way I'm going about various things it may be something you're interested in maybe not it depends if you ever want to reproduce boards like this um, then this is a good way to go about doing it a board like this is a lot of fun to reproduce because it's totally discreet there's no processor in here everything is completely discrete, discrete logic the only thing that's large scale are the memory and the uh, USART um, but there is a lot of work involved in a project like this and that's one of the reasons I decided to post this series of videos now I don't make money doing this I do this strictly for fun it's a hobby and until recently I ran my own companies where I developed uh, electronics using embedded uh, microprocessor and microcontroller systems uh, mostly RF designs and um, they were used in critical monitoring that sort of thing but um, I have developed over the last 40 years fairly specific ways of running projects and uh, the reason I uh, handle something like this as a project is because there'll be about five or six hundred hours of work in this and it's uh, not going to be particularly expensive in this case I suspect that the first batch of boards is going to cost something like uh, 800 to 1000 pounds for the minimum order quantity um, but having said that as I said it is a hobby and I like to try to recover the cost of this when I can um, I don't want to try and make money um, but if somebody is interested in buying a bare board I won't be making them assembled but I will sell um, the spare bare boards that I'll end up with then let me know and I'll let you have them at uh, exactly what I pay for them. Now someone recently requested if they could uh, help me with a project which I agreed to um, but he decided he didn't like this uh, formal approach to project management and seemed to think that entitled him to start sending me abusive emails. Uh, feedback's fine uh, if you want to be abusive that's up to you but uh, what I'm trying to do here is, is um, put out information that is of interest to people it's meant to be fun, it's meant to be a hobby um, if you feel like you need to be abusive then um, it's probably not a, a comment that's worth making 
Um, if you've got any good ideas on this, then please, by all means, feed them back. But as I say, the idea here is to try to um, create uh, projects and, and products and give ideas and information that's going to be of some help to someone. Uh, I'm not saying that my methods are the only way to go about doing things. There's any number of ways you can approach this. I'm just presenting one method and you can ignore it, use bits of it, use none of it, entirely up to you. I'm just doing this um, out of interest and hopefully you'll find something interesting in the videos. Uh, now what I've done so far is to look at the board. I've been right through the board. Now of course a, a board like this has gone through a number of um, iterations since it was first designed and so the actual uh, original documentation does not always match what you find on the physical board that's in front of you. There's probably quite a number of different uh, versions of this board now. Um, so what I've been doing is looking at the original uh, schematics for this and I've been transferring them into my CAD system. We'll look at that in a few minutes but the process is quite tedious. It's, it takes a long time. Um, but what I do, I'll give you an example. So these are the schematics for um, what I believe is this board. So the way I do this is I'll create a schematic in the CAD system and then as I add each connection, as you can see, I colour it in, treat it as a colouring book. And once I've um, added the track and I've coloured it, then I know that one's done. If you don't do this, it's very easy to miss um, a track or two. Uh, and of course that means that the uh, design won't work. You can see I've still got some to add on this particular sheet. Um, but on this board, as you can imagine, there are a lot of these. So I've been going through and adding these to the CAD system. They are mostly done. Um, the only things uh, that are likely to cause an issue really are the keyboard and this particular sheet. So the original ROMs that it used for the character ROM, so that's uh, these two devices over here, by, by default the machine comes with just the uppercase character ROM which is the one that's soldered to the board. The one that's in a socket is actually an option ROM and that's for lowercase characters. Sounds crazy these days, but remember this was back in the 1970s and devices like this were very expensive, so um, you had to pay through the nose for uh, anything, especially memory. Uh, that's also why a lot of the memory is also optional. Um, but the problem here is these are mask ROMs, so while the uppercase ROM can be found, it's a 2513 for anyone that's interested, you can still find these. Um, but they tend to be for different machines and they're not always the right character set for this machine. It probably would work. Um, but trying to find the lowercase uh, ROM would be probably almost impossible. And I looked at uh, trying to find ways to recreate uh, exactly what we have here and decided that it, it really wasn't going to be the way forward for this project. So what I've decided to do is make one change to the board which is to add or modify it to use a more modern ROM. So this is a 2716 and in addition to um, replacing the 2513s um, it's also a much bigger ROM. So I'm adding some switches which we'll look at in the CAD system in a minute which will enable the terminal to support more than one character set. Um, and again, I'll sort of go through in a future video how to uh, create the character sets for the terminal. Um, power supply is all very straightforward. All the rest of the parts are very standard, straightforward. It's got split um, multiple power supplies, so I'll need to take that into account when I'm doing the layout for the board. But other than that, very straightforward. It's just uh, a large project because of the sheer number of components on the board. Uh, and also, of course, I've got to find some solution for the keys. OK, so we'll go and have a look at the CAD system and I'll show you how far I've got and what the next steps are in this project. OK, so we're looking at the CAD system and as you can see, I've started creating schematics to duplicate uh, what we have on the schematic drawings. As I've been going through these, I've been checking each connection with a, um, a multimeter making sure that the connections in the schematic are what they're supposed to be. And as ever, there are quite a few errors in the schematics. It's not that unusual. 
Um, they are handwritten. They're not like um, modern CAD systems. Um, somebody actually drew them out by hand. And it's very easy for someone to actually write the wrong IC number. And uh, that's uh, happened in quite a few of the gates on here where I've had to try and figure out which particular gate it was supposed to be. Also, some of the connections aren't correct. And um, I suspect that's just due to either mistakes or possibly modifications in the schematic over the years. So I've been going through this. There are a lot of these. Um, so I, I won't go through what each one does. There's, as I say, there's lots of them. It's uh, just one of these um, designs where there's an awful lot of uh, ICs on it. And so as I've gone through, as I say, I've been checking all the connections, making sure that they are um, what they're supposed to be. And um, the one that is really of most interest at the moment is the uh, memory um, schematic. So I'll just pull that up. So this is the memory. And although it doesn't show this on the original schematic, um, it doesn't actually show the address connections at all. Uh, you have to try and figure out what they are by looking at the board. Um, I've got those figured out as far as I can. I've decided to retain the original type of um, SRAM because they are still quite easy to get hold of and fairly low cost. I've had to make a few other changes on here um, simply because I think there were some other errors on the schematics and it's just really putting a circuit down that will actually work. The biggest changes here however are in the, uh, the ROM area. So if you recall on the original diagram, there were two mask ROMs here, and I've replaced those with um, a single uh, EEPROM. And also because for whatever reason, they inverted the um, address lines going into the second of the two mask ROMs, there was some odd logic going on uh, on the schematic to cater for that and also of course to be able to select which of the particular ROMs should be used for a particular character that was being uh, selected. So I've modified that so that uh, we can use a single ROM uh, and also that the addressing of the ROM is correct uh, and of course uh, it then feeds the data out into a shift register. Uh, we're only using the bottom five bits, that's the uh, characters that are used uh, by this uh, display, so it's a, a 5 by 7 uh, matrix, and of course we're looking here across the character. I'll go into this in more detail in a future video as to how this particular terminal generates the characters. Um, this switch down here is an addition, it just allows us to select between two different fonts. Currently I've got a 2716 here, but I may change this to a 2732, which will give us up to four different fonts. So the full font, so this will be the equivalent of um, eight of the original mask ROMs. Uh, the rest of the schematics are all uh, pretty much what I believe is on the board. And what I've done from this point is generate footprints that match the uh, footprints on the board itself. It's not going to be an exact uh, true to form replication of the original board, but I'm gonna keep it as fairly uh, true to the original as I can. Um, so when we go through to the um, PCB layout, then what we end up with initially at least is this. Looks like a complete mess. Uh, I've got the um, interconnects turned on. So these uh, yellow lines show the uh, logical connections. These are the connections that need to be made by the copper tracks on the board. I'll just turn those off so we can have a clearer look at the board layout. Okay, so we've got the top silt screen on. You can see I've placed all the components, or at least all the ICs. I uh, haven't um, connected up the power supplies yet. Uh, all the um, discrete components are on the board, but uh, I still have to uh, add the uh, power supply components. Uh, and also the um, serial connectors as well. Now you can see what I've been doing here, rather than using just um, straight lines for the tracks, I'm sticking to the original form of the tracks to make them curved. It looks quite messy on the screen, it's just the way that um, the CAD system depicts them, but they are quite nice smooth curves. 
And um, what we have is, or what we will have, is an exact layout that matches the original, apart from, of course, as I said, the, um, the mask ROM will be one EEPROM. So there was two mask ROMs here, but I'm putting a single um, EEPROM there. Uh, all the rest of it, in theory at least, should be the same. So uh, you, this is the general idea for the project. Um, if you have any ideas as to the best approach for the keys, I'd appreciate any comments. Um, I suspect what I'll be using this for really is just a, a ball that will sit on the bench that I can connect to various different um, devices to control them. In terms of the video out, then of course there is a, a connector that goes to the original CRT, so you will be able to put this into a, an actual ADM3 uh, terminal if you want to do that. Um, but I will probably add a small bit of circuitry up here to combine the uh, horizontal, vertical and video signals to give a composite signal out and connect that to one of the spare pins on the video connector. And by doing that it will enable a, any standard LCD monitor to be connected to this board. So um, it will effectively allow you to use this with uh, a monitor you already have and uh, create your own dumb terminal um, to control pretty much whatever device that you want. So that's the plan so far. Uh, any feedback, any ideas would be appreciated. And so I hope you enjoy the videos as this project develops.